welcome to Majority Caucus. My name is Akbar Khomeini. Ahead of the December elections, the NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama has declared that he would not accept the outcome of the 2020 presidential elections. His declaration follows issues arising out of the ongoing voter exhibition exercise by the Independent Electoral Commission. Tonight, we would examine the facts, the lies, and the way forward. We'll go for a quick break. When we return, I will introduce my guests. Welcome back. Tonight, I'm joined by Evans Nemaku, Director of Elections and Research of the New Patriotic Party. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank um, you very much for having me. On the 18th of September, the Electoral Commission as usual in every election, started the process of exhibiting the register to allow for voters to check their names and to confirm their presence on the electoral roll before they would produce a final register for the election. How has the process been so far for the New Patriotic Party? Well, thank you very much for having me. And I think uh, for us as New Patriotic Party, we've always been guided by the rules of the game. We've been assessing the CI-91, CI-94, CI-126, 127, and the nineteen ninety two Constitution of Ghana. We've assessed the responsibilities of all the stakeholders in the electoral process. We are aware that in a CI, after every major registration exercise towards and elections. The EC is mandated to exhibit the register. And at this stage, it allows people who have registered to go back to their polling stations to verify and cross-check their details. And where there are challenges, it's an opportunity to affect any changes there may be. So the EC announced to political parties in the whole of Ghana that from 18th of this month, which was Friday, to the coming Friday, which is tomorrow, the eight-day program will be the period for exhibition. We were told that two days Doesn't have been added to, to end on 30th. So this is where we are. But I think for us as New Patriotic Party, in all candidness, this electoral commission has been very fair to the people of Ghana. How? How fair? Because your opponents say that the Electoral Commission is doing the bidding of, of the ruling party and that some of the challenges they have identified, in their opinion, have been deliberately orchestrated. Well, we are not surprised about the position of the NDC. The very moment this Electoral Commission announced that they will put in place a new voter management system that will be owned by itself, that will be robust enough to support our internal electoral system. The NDC never supported it. We saw them, they travel in the all courts of law, as far as to the Supreme Court. They even them. went on review, and we saw what happened in Ghana. So that would be the position of the new, for the NDC. It is not going to change. But I said that I think they've been fair to the people of Ghana in view of the following reasons. They carried all stakeholders through. In fact, at a point in time when the discussion was going as in putting in place a new voter management system, the EC constituted an eminent body yeah, that invited all political parties and other stakeholders into a discussion. Because the EC had made the point that it water management system was challenged. The equipment were obsolete. They were having challenges. And they had absolute no, ab no control at all. They had the no data. control because somebody elsewhere, a service provider, was in charge of the password, passcode, and could manage the system. As it pleases. As it pleases. On top of it all, it was costing the EC and the people of Ghana huge sums of money. At the point when they had been recommended to, to do refurbishment, it was more expensive than to put in place a new system. That's why they argued that it was necessary 
and financially prudent for them to put in place a new system. And so for us as new patriotic party, we never had any difficulty because we had at always made the point that going forward, it is important that we have a system that is own, that is transparent enough to support every electoral process. And so that was about it. So if the NDC at a point decide not to support an arrangement to put in place a system that will support efficient running and conduct of electoral system, that is their own cup of tea. In fact, at the point where there was a limited restriction exercise in 2019 towards the referendum, when the EC did the exhibition, the NDC member of parliament for Lembele constituency came to the public that he was seeing the EC because out of that registration, about 5,000 of his constituents could not find their names on the register. Wow. So it, it all fed into an arrangement by the EC that, yes, this is the system we inherited. It is important that going into an election, major elections, 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections, we need to have a system that will be robust enough, that will not be managed by an external factor, so that all stakeholders will appreciate the outcome. And so, New Patriotic Party didn't have any difficulty. And into this registration exercise, the EC, on daily basis, informed the good people of Ghana. Oh, yeah. Where they are. And the day, Christian, it let the citizens know. No, yeah. In fact, they and are so, yeah. for NDC, I'm not surprised. They will continuously disagree. Maybe, to their best of knowledge, they don't want us to have a system that will be controlled by the EC, a system that will ensure transparency, a system that will ensure credibility, a system that will give the good people of Ghana value for money. Indeed, even when we had the old system, which were controlled... Um, by foreigners. I remember in 2012 when we first introduced the biometric registration system, as many as 200,000 people during the Volta exhibition had issues with, with the register out of 8 million people. In 2016, under Madame Charlotte, there were similar concerns. But the issue is whether the challenges the NPP as a political party has identified some of the challenges that the NDC is raising? I think I'll bring you to this stage, but let me take you back to 2011-2012. The new patriotic party strongly advocated for the biometric exactly. system of voting. And so our position has always been that let's have a system that is fair, that is transparent. That is We've robust. never run away from that advocacy. And so we had the 2012 system. In fact, in that system, the then EC boss even said that his mother cannot appreciate biometric system of registering, no. and therefore he had difficulty with it. Mr. C. Dunketia made similar comments. Remember the argument that those who were into So we moved on. Towards 2012, that was it. Towards 2016, when the new patriotic party had established enough that the then register we were using had a lot of challenges because we were able to establish to the good people of Ghana yeah. that there were people who were in our electoral rule who didn't have to be on it. Absolutely. We established it. But the, uh, uh, the Justice Club Committee, that started some time ago at Alisa and engaged all stakeholders, even concluded that on that register, were over 600,000 dead people on it, and therefore the EC should take steps to clean that register. You know what Madame Charlotte said? It. She said she was writing to agencies to report to her on death that they recorded in their organizations. It didn't help. Before then, there was Abu Ramadan Ivan Nimako 1, 2, and 3 that established that, in which the Supreme Court ruled that there were some people who had gotten onto the register but had used the NHIA card as a means of identifying their nationality and therefore the EEC should take steps 
to clean the register. You saw what happened. In fact, at the point in the course of the discussion, Mr. Amadou Suli mentioned that it was impossible for them to, to establish. But at the point in court, they said they, they will be able to do it. Then we saw what the EC did. So going into 2020, for this EC to be bold and say that, yes, we need to have a very robust system, that was a welcoming news. And we've seen it, this registration that took place. Before the registration, the EC had told Ghanaians that as many as 16.8 million people were on the register. And then after the registration, we now have 16.9 million. Mm -hmm. I think that if you had even left that 16.8 and done a limited the registration exercise, exercise yeah. when the previous registration exercise has recorded 1.2 million, I think we are going to get into nine, 19 million to 20, yeah, million. to 20 million. So I think that for, for Ghana, this EC has helped us to have a very clean register that represents the true people who are Ghanaians, who reside within the electoral area, who qualified under the constitutional arrangement 18 years and above and of sound mind. Even that, in the course of the registration, some people were challenged. Yeah. The EC put in place the adjudication committee no, and some people, yeah. yes, and some people have, have suffered it. And so in the exhibition, it is showing in those polling stations where people did double and multiple registration and the NDC disagrees. And so, yes, uh, some people may have difficulty with that position. I am not because that has been the consistent position of the NDC. And I think they are doing themselves great disservice. Um, so your position is that the NPP is satisfied with the process thus far? My response is that so far, seven days has been done, close of day today. The New Patriotic Party has taxed our members, especially polling station executives, to make sure that the registers that have been exhibited in all the 33,367 polling stations have the actual reflection of people who have to be there. In fact, this exhibition exercise is an opportunity for corrections to be made. And it is also an opportunity for people where they disagree to object. So we've had discussions with our base. We know that they are doing the good service and honor to the party. We are going to wait until tomorrow when the cited constituencies in the Volta region, um, K2 South, K2 North, he cited constituencies in the northern region, um, Tamale South, Kumbungu, and Tolo. And the examples he gave were constituencies from the NDC's stronghold. The impression created from these examples that um, these challenges can only be found in NDC strong regions. And, and to that extent, it is a calculated attempt to deny the NDC supporters the opportunity to vote. What do you say to that? Well, Mr. Mahama was in Buno Ahafo, Buno region, uh, trying to convince those uh, citizens in that region. I think that to some extent, he's been deceived. Okay? Uh, if not, I find it a bit ridiculous that an exhibition exercise that allows people, people who have registered, opportunity to go back to their polling stations to cross-check their names and make corrections to it, will cause you to truncate your campaign so that you come back to stage a press conference. And he missed it. These allegations he made that all the examples he cited coming from NDC strongholds. As I said, Ekwapim South is not NDC stronghold, is, is it? No, it's it's not. not. Tema Centra is not NDC stronghold. And so I'm saying that it has to be those people who have had their names having problems to make an argument and get the corrections to be done at polling stations. It doesn't have to take Mr. Muhammad to come back. But I think the most reason why Mr. Muhammad came back has to do more than 
resources that he has run out of, his campaign that is not, not convincing, not, not, not exciting, not I mean, because and that they are not able to motivate, they don't have message to motivate the good people of Ghana to even listen to them. So they've lost the steam. So running meeting, central coming meeting. back, I mean, he, well, uh, uh, his running mate is another issue maybe we at another about, appropriate yeah. time we can speak to them because she's not a politician and so that is about it but we, we saw her in other regions people have difficulty even uh, recognizing uh, yeah her. so so that is the challenge of of mr maham i think that really he wasn't properly uh, briefed because if really he had gotten it right akachi Sav. Kumbungu, Tamale Central. I mean, let those people go to their polling stations to cross check. In this era, the EC has again provided a certain short code. Yeah. I 1422. Use, That's yeah. what I use. That's what I use. Also. I've still, until I'll go to my hometown, Bunzo, I've still asked my family members to cross check and make sure that if it's on the electoral mm -hmm. road. So why should it take Mr. Muhammad to run away from uh, Bono region back to Accra to undertake a, a press engagement? Um, because if you, um, so far, the, the NDC is alleging that as many as 7,000 voters cannot find their names. In some quarters, I've heard 2 million. That's quite ridiculous. I've heard 200,000. They, they're not unanimous on the figure. But even if we were to take... 7,000 as the official figure. 7,000 out of 16.9 million people. So, so let, let me give it to them. Let's, let's take it a global picture. I think that at the end of this exhibition exercise, people may object to their names being on the exception list and all that. Let's say we have 70 million registered voters. And you're looking at 7,000 who can still have the opportunity to make corrections to their details on the register. 7,000 is 0.041 percent of the total registered number, assuming it is 17 million. So, 0.041. What is the NDC talking about, my brother? The point is that they know that they've already lost the presidential elections as well as the parliamentary elections that How? comes up oh we're here to cast the first ballot we are here to but i think the good people of ghana have assessed both candidates for the two parties the case of new patriotic party his excellency nanado danko ekufuado under four years he's been very consistent on how he wants to lead ghana He's been very consistent with his manner of leading. That is a leader who is ready to serve, who has been serving with humility. He's been a leader who is very consistent and resolute in his position on how Ghana must be run. He's a leader who can be trusted. You know why? In 208, when His Excellency was made the running mate of the new patriotic party, supported by His Excellency Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, told the good people of Ghana that one thing we may have to have as a country is to educate our population. 208. He's been consistent. In that. He never ran away from that position. And when we got to 2016 and continuously he mentioned it, Mr. Mahama said if he had two billion to spend, he would not spend it on education. I said it was a whimsical promise by a desperate politician. So the good people of Ghana have seen the two candidates. They have no doubt in their mind that on December 7th, if you still have Ghana, that the Almighty Lord has not invited us. They will cast their vote for Nanado Danko Kufado to have that overwhelming majority lead. 
And my brother, let me tell you, in, in, in Ghana's electoral history, if you're looking, looking at the figures, you take out, if you take out 20, 1992, 1996, the first time a certain government will lose an election with almost one million votes, mm -hmm. worse of its kind, was Mr. Mahama. But isn't that making the NPP complacent? The New Patriotic Party is in complacent. The analysis you're saying that, okay, we won by almost a million. And so even if we're dropping, we're dropping around 400,000, 500,000, so we can afford. Maybe, maybe this is one of the NDC's uh, usual propagandist position. The New Patriotic Party, you heard the campaign manager, Mr. Peter McMahon, said that we are not looking at less than 1.5 million eh, margin. So that tells you. That is why for us, in this exhibition exercise, we are not making noise. But our polling station executives are combing all polling stations to ensure that those who need to have their names on the register will be on the electoral roll. So we are never complacent. I can take you slightly back. Last month, we were in Cape Coast. We launched our manifesto. Yeah. And since then, you've seen the activities being run within the party, as well as in government programs. So for us, we are serious about what is ahead of us. In humility, we are asking the good people of Ghana to give His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuado four more to do to more. Do more. And, and we are not playing games. Um, I mean, you spoke about consistency that the president has exhibited. In fact, it's one of his most admirable traits. Even when the odds is against him, he holds on strongly to his belief. It appears to be lacking in Mr. Mahama. So, for example, when you take his position on the Electoral Commission, he appears to be approbating and reprobating in a position um, in government, he says, allow the EC to do his work. The Electoral Commission is an independent body. In government, in opposition, he believes that the EC is no longer independent and the EC should no longer be allowed to do his work and that it is subject to manipulation um, by, by the ruling party. I'm sure if you were consistent, he would allow the EC to do their work. But um, today, the EC held IPAC. You were in that meeting. Um, we've had reports that the Electoral Commission is planning to, to do a second phase of, of voter registration. How true is that? Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, before I get to the IPAC meeting, let me address this issue of some inconsistencies on the part of Mr. Mahama. And it is true. Uh, when Madame Charlotte Osei was the chair, yeah. Mr. Mahama told the good people of Ghana that we should allow the EC to do its work, work. Yeah. because it is an independent body. In fact, that motivated Madame Charlotte Osei to change the logo of the EC and say that I've seen it, I've loved it. And, and we've taken we, it. We've, we've picked it. Yes. I remember very well. The EC didn't consult the new patriotic party. We were never consulted. We kept on fighting and assured the good people of Ghana that there will be a good leader, with or without Madame Charlotte say, because it is the law. And so we train our base. Going forward, if you want to look at all the things the NDC have said about the EC, you have an opinion about them. But we will not waste our resources assessing the NDC's position on the EC. Everything has to do with the CI, and once it conforms with the CI, the new patriotic party will work with. The NDC believes that the Electoral Commission is not abiding by the provisions of the CI. 
indeed the minority leader who also had the opportunity to speak to the people during their press conference, cited a number of provisions that the EC is not abiding by. And for example, he said the EC is required by law to publish the voter registry, uh, register on their website and that the EC is required by law to deduplicate the voter register, which the Electoral Commission abandoned. Okay. I mean, the, the, the law is clear, the art is clear that they have to publish the register on their website. So the EC must do that. If it's not on the website, because it could be on the website and some people will not be able to assess. What we have physical is what is being exhibited at the polling station. And that's where we've taxed our members to make sure that it represents what it must so our people are there watching for us. The other issue is that exhibition is an opportunity for people to make amendments to their details on the electoral roll. And I don't know how long they want to use to appreciate this position. And so for us, you're not going to <laughs> tutor them on how to manage this issue. That's what I'm saying that Mr. Mahama was not properly briefed and he has not helped himself. That's why I'm of strong opinion that the reason for his coming back has to do more than just an exhibition issue. I don't know whether he has gone to Bali to cross-check his name in the electoral roll or he has used the 1422. I don't know and I cannot speak to it. But there are continuous allegations and running down the EC is their own strategy. For us, there will be December 7, 2020. There will be elections, presidential and parliamentary. The objective of the new patriotic party is to ensure that Nana Dodam Kekufado will be retained. By and some 1.5 million. By more than 1.5 million votes. How is that feasible? Because on the register, close to 17 million people are on the electoral roll. And we're saying that based on the turnout, the new patriotic party base membership will be enough to give Mr. Mahama that difference. Unless he decides not to contest. And as you said, you, you did listen to him. I did. At the point, I realized that it is the usual allegations that, that Mr. Mr. S. Dunkete has been making, Mr. Evesefri Anka has been making, as well as Peter Boama Otukono. So it wasn't anything different. It is their usual allegations. In fact, they've called for the, uh, an observer group, both international and local. To and for your information, the campaign manager receive European Union advanced delegation towards monitoring of these uh, elections in December. And so New Patriotic Party, we've always, you could check from all post-election results, that we've always welcomed the local and external bodies to observe our process because it also becomes a training tool when they move to other countries. And so, Mr. Mahama, I think, is having a lot of challenges. And if you will go back to what the Kwesibuchi report said, that when it comes to uh, NDC's activities in campaign running, they always have difficulties. That's how come in 2016, a certain government, they lost by that huge margin. And about New Patriotic Party. Their results. We are picking our vote from polling stations, and we know that the good people of Ghana have so much confidence in Nana Dodan Kwekufuado and His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya that they will not have difficulty giving them that overwhelming majority. Well, we would be going for a quick commercial break. When we return, we would continue with the discussion. This is Majority Caucus.
Welcome back. Um, this is Majority Caucus. My name is Akbar Khomeini, and my guest helping me do the discussion tonight is Evans Nimaku, Director of Elections and Research of the New Patriotic Party. Um, before we went for a quick commercial break, I'd ask a question that today the Electoral Commission held an IPAC meeting. Um, what was the meeting intended to address? Well, thank you. Uh, you had asked this question. Yeah. Uh, Today's meeting, uh, the party was represented by our General Secretary, Mr. John Buedu, and uh, campaign manager, Mr. Peter McMenu. It tells you how serious we take such invitations. We do honor all invitations from the Electoral Commission. There were other, other stakeholders. Uh, there are other programs I'm coordinating, so I wasn't at IPA. But uh, I've been briefed that the EC intends doing continuous registration because under the act, it allows that it's only 60 days to the election that there will be cut off point where when you are registered, you will not be able to cast your vote. Right. So the law allows the EEC to do continuous registration until a 60 day cut off point. And so the EEC informed political parties as such. They also spoke about the, the ongoing exhibition exercise, that they expect that people will visit their polling stations and ensure that their details are well represented on the electoral roll. The, 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 the issue of some of the allegations that have been popping up were addressed by the EC. And I think that the EC has told the world that their system is well controlled now internally. And they expect that at this stage, people who are having challenges or their details will visit their polling stations and all corrections will be affected. And so that was the short agenda for today's iPad. So, so it means that there was unanimity that the EC can go ahead with the continuous registration? It's not an issue of agreeing or disagreeing. That is the law. The law mandates that the EC does continuous registration until 60th day to December 7th. That is where they, they cannot. And so they said they will come out with the exact date they will open up for such registration to be undertaken. So they've informed stakeholders. And is it for every eligible voter or there's a target group of voters? No, once, once you are 18 years, you have sound mind, you are Ghanaian, and you live within the electoral area, you are entitled because to... Because the report suggests those who were locked out outside the country who could not get the opportunity to register, and those who were under the mandatory quarantine and mm. never had the opportunity to register so those category of voters yeah i mean the fact that you, you were not under quarantine uh, or you were outside doesn't really miss an issue the point is that the law allows people who are Ghanaians who are more than 18 years who reside within an electoral area should be given an opportunity to register the only timeline is that 60 days to the election day, your name cannot be on the electoral roll. So yes, even that one, the EC uh, can register, except that your name will not be on that electoral roll. So the cutoff point is 60 days to December 7th. So that is the information. So if you were uh, cut off because of uh, quarantine, because we're not in the your jurisdiction of Ghana, that's a bad, but it's an opportunity for people who are now 18 years, who were not within their jurisdiction or for whatever no, reason not could not to have opportunity. Because people can also take the easy on, because that's, that's the law. Yeah. And because so since 1997. parties were informed. Uh, again, the EC has extended the exhibition date still to allow uh, people to visit their uh, polling stations to check their details. Um, since you're director of elections of the new patriotic party, I'm sure millions of the NPP supporters would want to hear from you the NPP's 
internal preparedness for the December elections, knowing that you recently conducted your parliamentary primary and there are issues in, and a lot of constituencies in the party would have to resolve. Well, thank you. I think uh, Evans is just one of the team players. All doesn't rest on me. And so the new patriotic party at this stage, the leadership of the party chaired by Honorable Freddie Blay is being assisted by our general secretary and other party leadership. The campaign manager, Mr. Peter McMain, assisted by Mr. Lord Comey, Honorable Sheikh Mustafa Hamid, uh, Dr. Efia Asabi Asari, and other campaign team members are playing their role effectively and efficiently 24 7 running around the country and directing the party machinery and party executives to reach out to each person on the electoral roll. And we, some of the issues are open. You see party people undertaking health work, other party programs ongoing. The party has launched its and uh, inaugurated its regional campaign teams. Yeah. Same have been done for constituencies, constituency campaign teams. Oh, the NDC, you have opportunity to listen to this. Our constituency campaign teams are chaired by our parliamentary candidates and constituency chairmen, assisted by key influencers and members across constituencies. Additionally, all party members are key members of the 2020 campaign. And so we know that with this in place, the new patriotic party will cause another surprise come December 7th. But we do this with a certain level of humbleness, a certain level of appreciation of the concerns of the good people of Ghana. We do this with respect because our leader, Nanando Danko Kufad, has shown to the good people of Ghana that if you want to lead, you have to serve. So we are seven. And uh, it, it didn't come just per chance. The ECOWAS eh, has honored the new patriotic party and the good people of Ghana, an honor that has put Ghana to another level that our president is not the chair. If you look into the history of ECOWAS, a president who is seeking an election in the next few days, you'll be given a position that transcends beyond the days that you are seeking election. It tells you that they've, in fact, given another a certain assurance and support. And we know that the good people of Ghana have seen it, that Nanado Danko Kufado will be the president and continue to serve the whole of ECOWAS and Africa and play his role that will transform Ghana to another level. We cannot remain in this level. So the new patriotic party rank and file appreciates the honor that Nanado is bringing to Ghana and will do everything in our power. Pray on daily basis for our president and his running mate, the digital Mahamudu Baomia. I, I asked this question on the back of claims that the voter registration exercise that the New Patriotic Party strongly supported did not favor the party, especially in a stronghold of Ashanti and its team region. And on the basis of these claims, many have the view that the end people would have to do extra more to be able to win as they did in 2016. You were instrumental in preparing the party for the registration. And you have the numbers. Do you care to share with your audience? What is key here is that the new patriotic party is happy with the, the numbers 
we participated fully and know where we are as we speak. We got our members and encouraged Ghanaians to exercise their franchise by going out there to register in their numbers. We know that the good people of Ghana have confidence in His Excellency Nana Dodan Kwekufuado. And they will make this very sounding come December. Uh, the NDC have been kidding themselves that their strongholds have the numbers. We will give that to them. Come December 7. It will show from the figures that will be recorded in all the polling stations. We have never had difficulty putting together figures. And we did it in 2016. And so the EC is mandated to make public results from all polling stations. And we know that when these figures are put together, Nana Dodan Kukufado, the same way he did in 2016, giving Mr. Mahama a very huge punch and knock, Mr. Mahama will suffer the same. And I hope that at this stage, he will rather retire and enjoy his benefits as former president. Yeah, those who say you know what is preparing for 2024. You know what, when he, he got that shock, his family put it in the public domain that he was not going to contest again. Oh, yeah. So at the point I said, he failed to advise himself. And he came again. I mean, he says, only a fool who doesn't change his mind. Okay, he's a politician. He's in there again. But I can assure you, if you've observed him closely and the things he said today, I am open and I'm keeping my opinion at this stage in, on my chest. But I can assure you, he has no confidence in himself that he will go into these elections and beat Nanado Danko Kufado. It is not going to happen. But you see, we were once advised that in boxing, when you are knocked down, the referee gives an opportunity by counting one to ten, yeah. so that in a way you recover and, and assure him whether you'll be able to, to continue. continue. I think that the point and the shock Mr. Mahama received from His Excellency Nanado, he has still not been able to recover. And if he had advised himself from what Mr. Agbangbabin said, from what of course, Pio Gabra said. In fact, and he's now what, campaign manager. From, from what Professor Jusai Alabi said, I don't think he would have been in this race. But hey, he's a human being. Maybe he enjoyed going around the country. Maybe if he's not contesting, you have difficulty running around. So he's in the race. We can only wish him well. But we know that in December 7th, Nana Dodan Kukufad will have the resounding victory once again. But I want to please let Mr. Mahama hear this. It doesn't lie in his mouth to say he will not accept the results. It is the law. If the numbers do not favor you, what else would you say? We have one Ghana. We should prepare ourselves to ensure that there's peace, there's harmony. There's tranquility in Ghana. The new patriotic party, we've been into elections. But he says... In, he... in 2012, after the presidential elections, when we had gone to court and all saw how the proceedings ruled out, we still accepted the outcome. So Mr. Mahama should be ready to accept the 2020 presidential result. He says, unless the he decides of, uh, not to contest, but once he's going to contest, he will lose the elections. I want to assure you, he will lose the elections and he must accept the outcome. He can't change. If the numbers are not in your favor, how can you say you will not accept it? But if the numbers came about from what he called a flawed process, you expect him to accept that? The processes are not flawed. There are no processes anywhere. There's nowhere. I mean, check it. What does the law say? The EEC, after registration, must do exhibition. 
during the exhibition if you have challenges go visit the polling stations and cause corrections to be made to your details and you cause this a means to cut off your people from the register and you are talking of 7,000 people out of about 70 million 0.04 percent you must be kidding and you will not give him that much attention the earlier he and his team advise themselves the better for them definitely 2020 20, december 7 the good people of ghana will vote massively for nanado damke and for parliamentary i can assure you the new patriotic party will have more than two thirds majority in parliament there are projections that the NPP could lose as many as 20 seats. And some analysts say as many as 30 seats. Well, is, is that a mean, worry uh, to the party? I mean, uh, analysts, the Economist Intelligence Unit yeah. has run a series of reports. And in all that, there hasn't been any that their report put out that uh, Mr. Mahama will be able to beat Nanado Danko Kufuado. Nor any of them that says that the NDC will have more numbers than the new Patriotic Party in Parliament. It's not going to happen. Uh, I've heard uh, lawyer Haru Naidrusu saying that the 55 seats they lost, they've already captured majority of them and that they will have majority in parliament. How are they convincing the good people of Ghana? Yeah, what, they're what? banking their hopes on the fact that you had a delayed parliamentary primary, and we know how acrimonious our politics is, whether it is internal or is external, and that after every contest, it takes time for the party machinery to heal and to work together. Before, before we went into the 2016 presidential and parliamentary election. Mr. Mahama told the whole of Ghana that the new patriotic party was a divided party and that we could not come together to manage our internal arrangements. He saw what happened to him in December. So yes, they can appease themselves with that position. We did our often constituency primaries some time ago, 106 successfully done with this same for where we have certain members of parliament yes internal elections and i can show for new patriotic party we have what you call if i put out the conflict resolution committee that work on individuals and party rank and file to ensure that individuals interests do not override the bigger party interest and so he should, he should keep on wallowing in his... We have a few more minutes to, to wrap up the show. Um, have a listen to you. The NPP seemed satisfied with the process so far. Um, the NPP seemed prepared for the elections in December. And the NPP is confident of winning the, the, the elections. What other processes is government and party putting in place to ensure that the process is peaceful? We are committed to in two minutes. ensuring that the whole electoral process will be conducted according to the dictates of the law. That the actions of all stakeholders will conform to the rules of the game. We expect the security agencies to be very professional in a manner devoid of biasness. We expect that political parties will play strictly to the rules of the game. And we hope that come December 7th, the good people of Ghana who endorse once again Nanado Danko Kufuado. Because as a party, we've always advocated for best practices that will enhance 
our electoral process. So what we are seeing, that's why he's saying that if we have any issue, we make sure they are addressed at the polling stations. I mean, for NBC, mere registration of senior high school students was a problem for them. They went as far as to the court and they lost. And so if you not encourage people to have their names on an electoral roll, you expect them to have the opportunity and vote for you. If you want to come to power again and, and truncate policies that are enhancing people's life, you want them to give you their mandate. I don't think that's what the good people of Ghana are looking for. So we are very confident that by the grace of God, come December 7th, they will not have difficulty endorsing four more, four Nanado Danko Kufuado and His Excellency Dr. Mahamud Baumia for them to continuously project developmental policies that will propel Ghana to the highest level. Um, viewers, you have heard it all. We are very confident that by the grace of God, on December 7, 2020, the good people of Ghana will return Nanado Danko Ekufuado and the NPP to continue to do good for Ghana. See you next week for yet another interesting edition of Majority Caucus. Good night.